ladies and gentlemen, to the AI Forum. And with me, I have the CEO of Freeside, Thomas. Absolutely lovely discussion out there in the panels. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us today. No, thanks for having us. Where do you see the future of uh, AI running in urban development? Well, I think one thing you need to understand that a city that we live in, and for the many years that has been, it's a combination of systems. It's a combination of nervous uh, nodes, nervous system that comes together. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways that you can put together is put a fabric of AI into the smart city uh, platform, mm -hmm. where you could understand how each system will work against each other and how it's related, how it corresponds, and more importantly, how it affects the citizens, how we work, exactly. how we live, how we play. So AI has the ability to do some of that correlation, ability to help us do better traffic management, better civil activities, better law, better safety uh, in the city. Right, and do you think it's capable of adapting to its citizens? I think it's capable of personalizing and understanding mm -hmm. data at a much rapid right. and higher velocity and volume than regular systems could. And right. that in turn, it will support decision-making um, frameworks that you know, city, city policy makers, governors can make. Right. Any successful case studies or examples that you can share with us today where AI was used? No, absolutely. You know, recently we signed uh, with Kazakhstan's uh, capital city, Astana, to bring a fabric of smart city into the city. Uh, we're looking at traffic management, better traffic management, we're looking at better safety, we're under trying to understand multimodal mobility in the city right. to plan better uh, transportation services. Right. Even in Albania, we're familiar in the Balkans, you know, we're working with Tirana to implement a traffic management system that understands the city, right. less so of just um, you know, traffic alone. And when we talk about transparency and privacy, it's a quite a, an important topic. Yes, it is. How much would you say this is transparent? How much does it get involved you know, with the citizen privacy? No, I think it's as much as you know, how you, you, you would use Waze or Google, and you'd be very happy telling Waze where you're going right. so to get it right. I think it's the same. Okay. Right, it doesn't infringe, it takes data that's available, that's collected from vehicles, from buses, right. you know, and, and compute and try to give a better and more cohesive uh, uh, plan for you to move around the city. Right. Now, since you are the CEO, one personal question for you. If I could give you a time machine and you can go back in time, what would you tell the younger version of yourself? Would there be anything that you would change? Yeah. Anything that you're particularly proud of? In you know, your no, I think there are always defining moments in, in careers. Right. You know, and one thing, if you look back, um, you probably would say something like, you know, AI is coming, right? But you're already in the middle of it. So paying attention to the algorithms that actually work around in your life that touches you on a daily basis keeps your mind open to technology opportunities in, in ahead of time. So, you know, look out for the red car. Right. You know, it's, it's probably the, the, the message I would tell myself younger. Always be ahead of time and be attentive. And be aware, yes. Right. Any tips or tactics up your sleeve that you can give out to our young leaders out there? Well, I think uh, we spoke a lot about startups and entrepreneurship. And uh, we are in the, in the era that technology like AI may change. Right. But the spirit of entrepreneurship is not a technology-centric uh, mindset. Right. It's, it's a human mindset, right? And entrepreneurs should always look at leveraging the best, coupled with the passion that you have, mm -hmm. to find you know the, the the goals and the the ambition you want to right. achieve. So I think embrace AI, but coupled with the passion that you have. Right. That's a wonderful ending to our interview. Thank you so much, Thomas, right. once again. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck. All right, thanks. Wherever thanks you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. We're back at the AI Forum. Amna, absolute pleasure speaking to you again, seeing you, you again. Uh, thank you for this wonderful event. How does Mascar really leverage AI, since this whole event was about AI at the end of the day? Any main factors, how it leverages it, in your in your opinion? Sure, I think uh, I, I work with multiple industries, you know, telcos, retailers, uh, hospitality, fintech. And I think one of the most common um, challenge, I would say, is how to, data is one thing, but how to actually um, leverage this data to deliver real-time personalization. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about hospitality today. It's not just about like checking in and uh, being in a room, or even uh, logistics. Not just just about getting your parcel. You know. Right. So how we actually optimize the marketing budgets of our clients? You know, getting a better return on the investment by actually using personalized uh, offering, personalized content. So it's not only that. You are going to an e-commerce platform for a different thing versus me. But it's also the way you want to receive an offer would be different than me. The way right. the offer should look like in terms of content would be different. 
So I think a lot of our platforms and capabilities that are actually leveraging AI are actually helping our clients to deliver personalized solutions leveraging AI. The way they adapt to the clients, basically. Absolutely. The way the offer adapts Different to industries. Them. Yes, right. You can take an example of a retailer, of telcos, financial inclusion, SME underwriting, of everything. And the second aspect, I would say, is the cyber risk, security, and fraud. Right? Uh, which Important is, one. Uh, and, and top of the mind in today's world, you know, with all uh, the technologies that we are discussing, not only on AI front, but every business has to be digitized today. We talk about startups today, right? They have to future proof their business. Right. So how do you leverage AI in terms of scoring? And there's a lot of work that we are doing to incorporate AI in our scoring, in our uh, fraud platforms, in our, and especially fraud prevention. Right. And, and how do you see AI really reshaping the decision making on that executive level um, that you're on? So we talked about today that, uh, and it was interesting, some people were asking, what's the connection about leadership in, in the world exactly. with AI? Like, why was that chosen as the theme? And uh, I think it was a fabulous conversation when we were talking about how to make sure people are not left behind, right? How do you include everyone? Uh, we heard from the aviation industry, uh, they're people who are towards the end of their career, right? How do you make sure they're included? They have the experience, you know? Uh, they want to contribute. Then talking about new jobs that have been created, like there are millions of people who are just freelancers and content creators, right. you know? They maybe don't want to work for a corporate, right? So how do you upskill your talent? There's so much new technologies out there. And I think the different ways we talked about. We talked about uh, empathy. We talked about upskilling uh, where we really understand what are the skill set that is required as opposed to the prior experience. Right. Agility, curiosity, how do you build that in your teams? You know, Giving them experience across different areas of the business, giving them experience across multiple industries, in my case, because I look up to so many industries and so many geographies. Right. So all those are such important aspects of leading in today's time that we have to make sure that we discuss people and leadership wherever we discuss technology. And Definitely. wherever we discuss people, we should discuss women. Definitely. Now, a lot of concerns have been raised, especially today as well. I've heard it during the panel about the displacement of jobs and the displacement of the workforce with AI coming in. So I just wanted to ask you inside MasterCard, how are you guys dealing, you know, to make sure that you're adaptable enough, to make sure that your, your workforce at the moment doesn't have fear that, you know, one day they might be displaced? So I think technology, uh, and we talked about it today, technology is extremely powerful, but it's, um, it's the human behind technology. Right, is making it powerful. Mm -hmm. It's us as human or deciding how to put this technology to use. So a lot of what we do is really about upskilling our workforce, you know, making sure that they have the right uh, skill set, not only for today, but for the future, right? The cross-industry experience, because MasterCard not only works with financial institutions, we work with everybody today, from retailers to governments to telcos, um, uh, fintechs, final right. later, crypto houses, right? And uh, how to uh, make sure that we have leaders who are encouraging agility, curiosity, empathy. And then more importantly, um, it's also about being relevant, mm -hmm. right? And I think being relevant is everyone's responsibility. Of course, we encourage that, I encourage it. I do it myself, you know. I from time to time go enroll myself into a course where I learn something new. We should all modernize ourselves with time. I mean, exactly. we, we live in such an ever-evolving landscape that it's impossible to stay in one spot. I always talk about the example of when cars came, right? People who were looking, imagine people who were looking after horses and cars. I'm sure they felt terrible. They weren't going to do right. this cart and horse, you know. The cars are going to just, they just eliminated the whole horse carriage industry. Right. Right? Uh, but they got really deployed, you know, they had to learn new skills and I think that's what's important. Uh, and also another aspect which a lot of our guests today talked about is maintain tasks, uh, operational things that most people really don't enjoy doing it, but probably they're doing it because it's mm -hmm. a job. Mm -hmm. If that gets automated, it also frees up space for creativity, for creativity, for intelligent decision making for things that technology cannot automate. Empathy, compassion, right. you know? And empathy for me is the foundation of innovation. Of so course. in a way it's also freeing up our mental space and as well as helping us and pushing us to do more things that actually we humans should be doing, right. but we're not doing because right. we're also supposed to do the boring mundane stuff. Anyways, Emma, it was an absolute pleasure speaking to you as usual. And thank you for this wonderful event and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.